Good morning. Thanks for coming out. Uh, hope everybody had a good evening and uh, is rehydrating now. Um, <laughs> welcome to a multiplayer Metasploit tag team uh, pen testing and reporting. I'm Ryan Lin. I'm a uh, information security engineer for SAS Institute, um, and I play around with Metasploit for fun. So um, this isn't my day job, but uh, I think that it is a great time. So um, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about uh, why we did this. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about why I think that this is a really cool thing. Talk about what solutions are out there uh, currently. Talk a little bit about uh, how all of the communication happens. Um, discuss a little bit about types of objects. And I'm actually probably going to do demos early to make sure that, uh, that we get to see fun stuff first. So the reason that, uh, that I started working on this is because when I was doing pen tests with other people, um, it was hard to organize information. You know, we have wikis, we have Dratus, we have all sorts of other things. But it all requires um, some good attention to detail from the people working. Um, if you have results and you're multitasking and you don't upload them right away, you can have people waiting for data. You can have people that have incomplete data. Um, and overall, just making sure that in a team environment, especially when it is uh, in a separate physical area, so you may have one person testing remote, one person testing locally, or even people in different uh, rooms in the same building, it's hard to make sure that you have all the coordination there. So uh, it occurred to me that Metasploit has a really powerful database backend. But the problem is, is that it's hard to get to that information right now. Um, unless you're sitting in front of the console, uh, pretty much one person can, can work on it at a time. So um, what was missing for me is I use a lot of the, the XML or PC capabilities, which allows you to remotely talk back and forth to Metasploit. Um, so since there wasn't a database module, I said, okay, fine, I'll write one. So I went ahead and made it so that remotely you can talk to Metasploit, you can push data in and you can get data out. So now that I had that part, I wanted to make sure that I had some good ways for some of my applications to talk in. So um, you're going to see three examples today. The first one is Nmap. The second one is going to be Nikto. And the third one is going to be Beef. Um, so what our goal is, is instead of doing tasks, then when you're done um, uploading stuff in, what if you could go ahead and your scanners directly log the data into Metasploit? Then at that point, what you really have is you have real time, actionable information in Metasploit. So uh, as you're going through your process, you're not waiting on other people. You're not wondering, hey, is this information complete or not? There are programmatic things that you can do to find out whether or not someone has started a task, completed a task, what the status of the data is in the database, and as you start building profiles, um, for instance, uh, you know, most scans start at low IPs, go to high IPs. You know, once you have a couple of different types of scans running, you can already be looking at information from some of the first parts of the scan before the scan's even finished. So uh, that's the basic problem. So that outlines most of that. The other piece is reporting. So um, two of the things that <laughs> <laughs> holy crap. You guys want to riot too? <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, so <laughs> basically uh, the, the, one of the problems is once you have all this data, how do you get a delta from, from one test to another? So we already have all the data in the database. So programmatically it should be pretty easy to say, tell me what things are different from the, the time before. Um, also, there's no easy way to automate reporting once you get all this data in Metasploit. You can look at your hosts, you can look at what exploits ran, you can look at all that. But, you know, how do you dump out a report that says, this is what I did, this is what time it was, you know, what got me shells back, what didn't get me shells back? You're relying a whole lot on the people doing the pen test being really scrupulous about what information they're writing down. Also, if someone comes to you and says, what happened at this time? It's nice to be able to go, okay, <laughs> let me look at this specific time period and say these were the tests that we were running right then and have all of that in a central location. So right now, I, 
I think Dravis is one of the strong alternatives to this right now. But the problem is, is, is back again to, okay, so we're running tasks, then we're putting data into the database, um, and then we can sort of correlate there. But it's all people having to be very diligent about as soon as they're done getting results, making sure that things are, are uploaded. You don't have any real time analysis, and especially if you have scans that are long running scans um, or uh, you know, scans where you have multiple pieces, you know, it's not necessarily extremely easy to put all that back together and, and get a comprehensive view of what you've got. Leo, um, I included because it's on the Backtrack CD, so I know a lot of people are familiar with it. And it's not really geared for multi person, it's really geared for only one person. And wikis are cool, but they're really arbitrary, so you have to be very good about having a librarian to keep all your information together. So, since Metasploit is really accessible, um, you know, I think probably everybody knows where to get Metasploit. Um, I decided to extend the XML RPC stuff to facilitate the database transactions. Um, and this is some stuff that Metasploit Express already does, but it does it through some, some other methods. So um, I don't have money. So uh, I thought that this would be a, a good way for, for me to get at the same information. So I just went ahead and created a, a database module and then started figuring out what, what extra pieces I needed to add to it for it to be useful to me. So the XML RPC extension allows the central logging of all the information, but the most important thing for me is that all this information is actionable. So as far as when you're pulling vulnerabilities in, when you're doing all of the, the scanning, all of the information that you have available is information that you can run Metasploit modules against is information that you can query from other applications to perform further tests. And overall, it gives you a central store of information where you can have applications pulling and pushing data out so you can have very up-to-date information that is available to both your applications and your testers. So I'm going to, instead of doing that, um, start off just showing you guys some stuff because that's a lot more fun, I think. And then we'll talk about how it works for uh, people who are interested. Um, so the first thing I want to show you guys is uh, last year I released a tool called Insploit which allows you to launch uh, attacks from Nmap and use Metasploit on the back end to actually perform the attack. So as Nmap is going through, uh, Nmap can call an Nmap scripting engine script to go out, talk to the Metasploit database, and then Metasploit will launch an attack on uh, Nmap's behalf. So uh, along those lines, most people probably don't want to just start throwing uh, exploits out there. But uh, the Nmap scripting engine is very powerful. It has port rules which will allow us to say if a port is open or in a certain status, let's fire a, a job. So the job that we're firing in this case is I've added uh, the code to Insploit for this year to be able to directly talk to Metasploit and add hosts into the database. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start up um, the uh, MSF console. And I've created a little RC script here that starts off by connecting to the Metasploit database as uh, the user MSF to MSF. And Metasploit is going towards using Postgres. Um, for a while you were able to use SQLite 3, um, but as the product becomes more powerful, you really want to look at switching towards Postgres. And Postgres is on backtrack, so it makes it a lot easier. So we're going to connect to uh, our database backend using user ID MSF to the database called MSF. Then we're going to load the XML RPC module using our elite password of ABC123. And um, the server type function is important. Uh, for a lot of this stuff I'm going to be showing, I'm using the web version. There's also uh, a raw version, but the server type web is important because what this allows us to do is to communicate via the server over HTTP using XML RPC. With a lot of the stuff that is out there, um, this makes it just really easy. Uh, if you use the traditional server, that's null terminated raw XML RPC, and so you have to write some transforms for your code. So we're just using this because it's easy and I'm lazy. So we'll go ahead and start this up, and as it goes through, you'll see the, the database creating objects. Um, actually, let me make this bigger so you can actually see the database creating objects.
Can people in the back see that? Maybe? Yes? Okay. Well, if you can't, then wave at me and I'll fix it. Um, let me make this one a little bit larger as well. Okay, so uh, what I've done is through uh, Insploit, which is again a series of NSE modules and NSE scripts for the uh, NMAP scripting engine, uh, I'm going to basically just run a raw scan right now. The uh, once you have Insploit installed, the Metasploit modules uh, for actually adding the ports are set to run by default. So um, if you uh, install it into your distribution, then it will go ahead and try to add stuff for you as it can. So we just have to do an nmap a and type in the right address. Um, and so we're going to just start scanning our, our local uh, little network up here. So back here I have uh, a listener for um, the XML RPC channel. So one of the things that you'll notice is over here for nmap we're actually going to have data, uh, data flowing through XML RPC coming into our database before nmap's even printing the data to the screen. So we're going to have more up to date information in our database than nmap is even presenting us to the screen as we're scanning. So that's I think one of the pluses. As you're going through a scan with nmap, especially for longer stuff, you're going to have data that is actionable in your database before any of this other stuff has happened. So there's nmap sending all of the wonderful goodness into the database. And you can see that it hasn't actually printed anything to the screen yet. So we now have hosts that we know about and we're just now seeing some output to the screen. So uh, I'm going to let this go for a second while I talk about the next part. The next thing that I wanted to do was to be able to get some vulnerabilities in to be able to really talk about um, uh, to really get a better picture of how all of this stuff was fitting together to be able to look at a whole host and figure out what vulnerabilities and what other actionable information we have. So I chose Nikto because I do a lot of web stuff and created a new report type for Nikto that would allow us to, as Nikto is scanning, go through and add vulnerabilities to the database. So now that we're done with the nmap scan, we can look at our hosts and we have all of our host information and we have our services and we can look at all of that information. So as part of the scan, we discovered that we have a server here that is listening on port 80. So let's go over to Nikto and look at exactly what vulnerabilities that might have. Let's see if I have it up there. So our format for Nikto um, is right here. Basically what we have done is we've created a new reporting format. So I'm going to be releasing all this code uh, on Monday on my blog, but uh, the new format requires just a little patch to Nikto and will hopefully be in the uh, distribution coming up within the next month or so. Uh, we specify our output file, which is the dash O, as our username colon password at the URL for our RPC listener through Metasploit, which Metasploit uh, listeners by default are on 55553 and use for the HTTP version a uh, RPC directory of slash RPC2. So we choose our host, the 192.168.1.254, and we'll just watch it start scanning, and then we can look at that information going directly into the database. So with this, uh, with nmap, it has to do a little bit before it actually starts running scripts. So as it is actually doing the port scans, we're not getting those da that data back. But as soon as nmap starts the script portion of its scan, then it will put data into the database during that portion. With this, it starts pretty early. So we already have vulnerabilities in our database. So um, as it continues to add, we can see that number increasing. One of the important things to, to note about this though is if you notice there's not a whole lot of data here that's very meaningful. Um, and the reason is most of the time when people are using Metasploit they're looking at the vulnerability references because that's what gets you the uh, exploit modules that you can use to further gain access to hosts. So um, the thing is is all of this data is actually stored in the database. So we're actually going to